Hey guys, G here. Welcome back to Luna Geckos. You know what? It's been a busy few weeks here at Luna Geckos. I got a new job. I'm working just outside of Chicago, out of town all week. Handy Dandy's been doing a great job picking up the slack. Maybe better than me. We might want to make her the official gecko feeder and cleaner and all that other stuff. And I'll just do these. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Well, you know what? Just got back from Chicago. Handy Dandy was there this week, too. It was her birthday. Wish her happy birthday, please. <coughs> we really didn't have time for a whole new video this week. So for this video, we're going to pull out one of my favorite pieces from that Ben trip. I took a break. I went on a bender in Bend, Oregon. You remember? The tour of the Reptile Zone. Probably the best reptile shop I've ever been to. If you already saw it, watch it again. It's Sunday. You don't have anything else to do. So listen to the intro. And when we get back, you're going to see the Reptile Zone. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Good morning. Look how beautiful it is here in Oregon. I had a great night's sleep. Belly's all full from that free continental breakfast. That's not really free, but it makes you feel better if you think it's free. What is a trip without checking out a local reptile shop. The reptile zone here in Bend, Oregon is supposedly one of the oldest, maybe the oldest reptile stores in all of the state of Oregon. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna check it out. Carpet python. Taking a nap. Oh, these gaboons are phenomenal. Hi, buddy. Got a cat? 
Damon? It's Charlie. I didn't see him at first. He's, uh, he's sneaky. Wow, what a cool store. The owner's here, his name is Jeff. He's kind of busy right now, so we're gonna keep looking around and we're gonna see if we can grab him for a minute and get him to say hey to you. Enjoy the tour. Hey, you're busy, don't worry. I can fit in this one. Is this your quarantine room? No, babysitting room. Oh, you guys do, oh, do pet babysitting? We do lots of babysitting. I have some brand new baby blue skins right here. No way. We just got them They're really mean and spicy. This is Betty, everybody. We got some babies. She's the cutest thing ever. Look at that. little, they're very yeah. feisty. Look at that tongue. Come on, buddy. Don't be shy. So tell everybody what this is. This is the. This is a Northern Blue Tongue skin. And they are the, one of the most precious skins out there. Very, one of the most common, if not the most common, right? Um, they're fairly, they, they are common in the pet trade, but they're um, kind of hard to get because they, um, the breeders, like, they're really picky for who they sell to, which they should be because they're pretty special, sweet little skinks. Once they get past this little baby stage that everything wants to eat them. Hi, little guy. Did you see Skylar? The, um, we have a big one. We have an older one. Can you show us your tongue? <laughs> No, he's not going to. He doesn't want to. He's shy. Yeah. You don't want to be on YouTube, buddy? I don't think he's had his morning coffee. Is that who? You have a tagu running around here he somewhere, too. Find him. He's probably hiding in the back. When I first walked in, I saw a tail disappear around the corner. <laughs> well, and I wasn't fishing. sure what it was. Look at this guy. Hey, this is Jeff right here. He's the owner of this shop. Say hey, Jeff. We'll do we'll talk somewhere where it's quieter. Yeah, so we can pick up your voice. You want that? Yeah, he has a lower tolerance so much. I have a tegu on my shoe. Hey, this is Jeff, everybody. He's the owner of the Reptile Zone, and he's pretty busy today, but he's, well, every day, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yes. and he's taking a little bit of time out to say hey to everybody and tell you about the Reptile Zone. So, Jeff, is this, is this the oldest store in Oregon? The as, oldest far, reptile as far store? as I know, I'm not only the oldest, I'm the largest. As far as 
quantity. Uh, there is one other store that touts itself as being the largest, but square footage with nothing in it doesn't. Yeah, that's fair. No, yeah. it's, but so I, you could get I a do. big warehouse and put one Bavarian in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. But I, I've surpassed at least 10 other stores that have come and gone over the last 13 plus years. So I'm, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, what, what a great store. A lot of, a lot of snakes. Like venomous, which yeah. I'm not used to going into a reptile store and seeing all this venomous. So it must well, be an organ thing, right? So I, I taught biology for a long time. And I worked San Antonio Zoo. Uh, I worked with raptors, uh, rehab programs. I worked with primates. But reptiles are my passion. And having been a teacher, education is still a huge big part of what my store is about. So, you know, you come in, you're unfamiliar with something, you want to learn something, you absolutely get to it here. The reason I've got the venomous and some of the other things, I've got a barnack amethystine python over there that you're not going to find that quantity and quality any place, probably on the west coast. Um, so I have venomous, like my Gaboon Vipers right here, because how many places are you going to go to outside of a zoo or a, a serpentarium or something that you're going to find Gaboon Vipers? Um, I've got four different cobras, uh, saw-scaled vipers, variable bush vipers, um, Rattlesnakes. I've got two Western Diamondbacks that have been on non-stop breeding for the last month and a half. Um, got my smooth fronted caiman. So I have a lot of stuff in my store that I want people to be able to enjoy that may not see them any place else in Oregon. I got more reptiles than the Oregon Zoo does. So while I sell a lot, a lot of my animals that I have in my store are for the enjoyment of people coming in and um, wanting to see them. I'm not Petco, I'm not pet smart. Um, I've tried really hard to not make this look like a retail store. I want it, when you come in, to immediately feel comfortable uh, because reptiles scare the daylights out of a lot of people. And so if I can make it inviting and to put them at ease as they walk in, then showing them a ball python that they may never have held in their entire life is that much easier. So um, the store is about ed uh, education primarily. Conservation uh, is a huge big part in it. And when I do school presentations and, and birthdays, um, I show my eastern indigo that is almost extinct in some parts of Florida. Um, I, I bring out my Burmese, which 10 years ago, was really um, very populous in um, its native land, but because of the fashion industry and killing them for their skins, even the Burmese python is, is almost extinct where it lives. Luckily, we have tons of them in private hands, breeding and everything like that. So the Burmese, the Burmese is never going to go away, but it would be really good to go to where it's native and see one along with a mess yeah. of other animals so i agree actually my first reptile ever these guys a lot of these guys know first reptile i ever had 1987 i bought a burmese python uh, yeah it's a while back yeah a while back i think i was i don't want to tell you how old i was but i was afraid of snakes right yeah. and um, i got to get over this i can't go my whole life being I'm afraid of snakes doing it. so i went for a big one yeah. Um, she wasn't big at the time. She was a baby, so yeah. two and a half, maybe three feet. She got to about five, five and a half, maybe six. Never really measured her. Yeah. And I got busted with her in my college dorm room. And it was either get rid of the snake or get kicked out of college. So yeah. she went away. Uh, that's too bad. Yeah, my first real reptile that I remember outside of catching blue bellies and garter snakes and gopher snakes in California. Um, I got a Colombian tegu from our local pet store, which was hell on four legs and um, never should have been. I knew, I know now that it was wild caught and it acted wild caught. And um, the pet store owner at the time, I was like 14, 15, uh, said feed it raw hamburger and raw eggs. 
Well, that very first poop ended the uh, existence of it in my house, and I took it back because my mom didn't want anything so stinky. <laughs> but it just it fascinated me uh, that we had something different than blue bellies out there in the world. So this is this is Hank, and for those that are uh, higher than maybe a fifth grade education, which I hope I'm not insulting anybody, his name is G A N K, Hank because he is a Gila monster, G-I-L-A. But Hank is, is probably one of my top three lizards that I just love. And he looks like a little tank. Yeah, tank, Hank the Tank. Hank the Tank. Um, but I've also got a Mexican beaded lizard, Julio, which is a, a sweetheart as well. Um, but I, I definitely would like to show you. Come here, Bernie. Shed, but and the only way to really do him justice, you want to come out front here. Yeah, put him in a natural light. Yeah. All right. Here. <laughs> Look at this guy. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get him. What are you doing out here? You the welcoming committee? So this is Barney, amethystine barnet python, probably the, the number one snake in my store, mostly because you're not going to find an amethystine of this uh, disposition, let's say. Uh, I've let two-year-olds hold Barney um, and then find one, a barnet on the west coast, this disposition and this quality. Uh, I, ch I challenge anybody to show me a nicer, more docile amethystine that is a barnack that's almost 12 feet long, too. Uh, usually he is. Right? Oh, you let him hang out out here? Yep. He'll go a couple hours before he gets. They're the longest, truly arboreal snake in the world. Tree dwellers of his stature, you know, they can get up to 21 feet. The scrub, true scrubs in Australia, he'll probably max out at maybe 14 foot. So he's got a little bit more to go. But just, yeah, he's my, he's my baby. This is, no, sorry, this is Saul. He's in bad state of shed and some of his legs and stuff. But um, what's way cool about these guys, this guy's only about four months old. They give birth to one live baby a year. Um, they live in a community where mom, dad, previous siblings, aunts, uncles, they all take care of the, the most recent uh, uh, baby. Uh, they live up to 85 years. They're totally an herbivore, um, and they're the largest skink in the world when they're fully grown. That's a skink. This is a skink. This is a monkey tail skink, and they're called that because, hold on, Saul. Sorry, I just scared the crap out of them. They use their tail uh, to hold on. I saw, I saw one when I was in middle school at San Francisco Zoo full grown and I've won one ever since and only took me 50, 50 years to get it. So here's my other one and he does not have a name just yet. So no issue with males together? They're very difficult to sex and so right now I don't know what either one of them is. So. Touch him. Hey, Riker. Hey. Is he poisonous? <laughs> no. What is he? He is an Argentine black and white tiger. Come on. 
On my counter, buddy, you've got. You can't be messy like you normally are. All the way in. No, see? <laughs> Great, now the yolk's on me. Well, actually, what started was catching a bullfrog tadpole when I was nine, watching it turn into a bullfrog, and then just being fascinated by that process. So, over the last 57 years, I, I've had a lot of critters in my possession. Lots. Wow, that's cool. Thanks for sharing this story, man. And I really appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time and showing us around the store. I know you're super busy. Thank you so much, and it was fantastic to meet you. Well, it's a pleasure. I'm so glad to be part of this. And if you're ever in Bend, Oregon, come by and see the Reptile Zone. It's the only thing worth seeing in Bend. Just kidding. I won't go that far. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're probably not going to let me come back now. Next time I land, they're going to be like, no, you got to go. Thanks, bud. Hey, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, enjoyed meeting you. Good time. All right. There it is. The Tour of the Reptile Zone. Man, what a great guy Jeff was. Appreciate all the time. I know he's busy. Appreciate all the time he took. Amazing animals. If you're ever in Bend, Oregon, heck, even if you're never in Bend, Oregon, you might want to book a trip. Get to the Reptile Zone. See Jeff's shop. Unbelievable. Great folks. Great animals. You won't regret it. So I hope you like this video. If you did, hit that like button, share it with your friends, and above all, hit that subscribe button and ring that notify bell so you don't miss content like this. Well, you know what you'll never miss? That's right. You know, Sunday. Every Sunday, right here on Luna Gecko's channel. New episode, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And don't forget the merch. So until next time... I'm G, that's Handy Dandy, that's Miss Poppy Dog, we're Luna Geckos, see ya. It's over already. See you next week. It sound right, boy.